Welcome back agents, Secret Agent Stash here, and today we have an exclusive interrogation with a legendary creator that we've been trying to apprehend here for quite some time. You may know him from other industries, and he's making his way into Web3 here recently, but we're gonna stick him into the box for an interrogation today. Welcome to the channel, Ben Morrow. What's going on, man? Hey, thanks for having me. Maybe you didn't have much of a choice. We sent our agents out there. You know, they, they finally apprehended you here for this interrogation. We got you in the box. We're gonna ask you a bunch of questions. I hope you're ready. It's gonna be intense. Sure. All right. <laughs> you don't look you don't look very worried. <laughs> Sometimes I have to bust out the torture tools to convince people to give me the intel and information that I need. But I think that today maybe we have a, a very willing participant and you're, you're going to break. You, you don't, I, I feel like you don't have the constitution to, to not give me the intel. So I think we're going to get everything we need without having hurt you. So I think good. so. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So for, for you guys that do not know, um, Huxley is... We'll start backwards. Huxley is a game that is being developed. It is a Web3 focused game, elements in web, uh, of Web3, right? But it, it goes well beyond that, right? So so just kind of look at this, you know, it, it, it started off as really a graphic novel, right? And then you've been looking at making this into a film. And then the, the game is kind of the third component here, the way that I see that, right? I mean, it, it, tell, tell us um, about that, just real quick. Well, actually... To reframe it more, Huxley is a graphic novel IP. It started as a graphic yeah. novel, spent like almost a decade writing, illustrating this myself. Um, all these extra things are kind of components that I would like to do as it goes on. But the core of it is a graphic novel book IP, expanding out the next stories this year and stuff. Um, when I was re releasing the graphic novel, I adapted the work with a really small but talented team to turn it into like a cinematic trailer to show this is kind of a proof of concept of this is what it could look like as a TV show or a movie or a CG animation. And um, a lot of it's really just like pre-planning for those meetings, which are happening early this year. And same for the game side. A lot of that was a vertical slice proof of concept. Yeah. Here's, here's what this cool world can look like in game form. And that's kind of the extent of it, same as a cinematic trailer. So games and all these things are more longer term things um and these smaller experiences are more here's a proof of concept of how cool this can be in these other mediums but the core of it is very much graphic novel stories um mm -hmm. as i'm building out this kind of trilogy at the moment and, and, and basically you know all coming from this like six series graphic novel that you've, you've put out you know uh and, and but but this is not your first go it's not like hey i just started Making graphic novels, and uh, you know this is my first entry. I mean, you've worked on films like Elysium, The Hobbit, Chappie, Valerian, which I actually liked. I know some people didn't. Uh, Lucy. You've also worked Call of Duty, Advanced Warfare, Black mm -hmm. Ops Three and Four, yeah. Halo Infinite. I mean, this is a, it's a mm -hmm. large body of, yeah. of concept design and, and creative work that you've been on. Um, and, and and Huxley is kind of like this is your baby, right? This is this is your original yeah. thing. And, you know, from these graphic novels, you know, trying to create additional IPs around this, I think, is, is awesome. You know, I, we, we see it obviously a lot with, um, you know, best-selling book is now a Netflix show. And then now it's also sure. a video, or video game. Or it goes the, uh, one way or the other, right? And I think that that is, uh, you know, something that I really enjoy. Being able to experience these worlds, these characters, these storylines across different mediums, you know? Uh, maybe you could speak uh, to that a little bit and, and, and how you and your experience has kind of played into that here sure. with Huxley. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that was really like, that was kind of like me understanding how to make something for other people. Like yeah. my early experiences was moving to New Zealand to work at Weta Workshop. Um, and that's where I worked on all these amazing movies with Hobbit, Peter Jackson, at least with Neil Blomkamp um, and a bunch of other stuff in between. But I think Elysium especially was kind of like the education almost because we basically got like a two sentences of like, here's kind of the movie I want to make. And then we were just coming up with ideas as he was writing the script. Mm -hmm. And then we designed and fleshed out everything in the script. And then we started building everything. Then it shoots the movie, then the VFX and post. And that's like a whole, that's like a four year process. Yeah. And to me, that was like very educational because I knew I can do a lot of things, but then it shows me how 
many gaps there are in the things I need to learn. Um, because ultimately, long term, I want to do something for myself. Um, and at the time, making a movie or making a game or anything like that takes lots of people that, you know, mm-hmm. like Hobbit and stuff, that takes thousands of people, big AAA games are like sometimes thousands of people as well. Um, so for me at the time, as I was heading out of what a workshop to freelance and start working on the call of duties and stuff, um, a graphic novel is still one of the few ways a, a single creator could be the writer, director, production designer, um, cinematographer, do everything right. Um, it, it's a lot of work and most of our favorite graphic novels, you know, there's like 20 names in there, but it's still possible for a single creator to make a uh, kind of a singular work of art. Um, and, and that really excited me, but to me, I need to go through that process a few times on the hobbits and Elysium especially was like the first like start to finish. And I think Valerian and some of the others were maybe the second like start to finish. And each time I wanted to feel like I had more of an effect on it. And I think after Valerian, it was when I was starting to be more comfortable of like, okay, I designed like whole sequences of that movie. I designed every character in that sequence. I designed like to that degree where was like, I think I can do it for myself now. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, and it's just a lot of it's like confidence building, I guess, of just, oh, I'm not very good at this. I'm not very good at that. Uh, I'm not so good at telling stories. I should work on this kind of project to get better at that. Um, so a lot of those experiences were double kind of like, I, I want that experience, but also I think it'll be good to learn how to get better at weapons on Call of Duty or robots or whatever. Um, so every experience was super informative and, and also just really fun to bring to life. Yeah, I mean, every one of these projects is a small stepping stone, right? You, you're learning a little along the way, and you're taking what you've learned and bringing it to the next project, right? And and that is, you know, when we talk about creating things in general, you know, inspiration is one of those things that, you know, whether it doesn't matter what you're creating and whether it's, you know, TVs, film, movie, music. Uh, you know, a lot of people say there's no real original stuff. Like, everything has come from some sort of inspiration, right? The person created it was inspired by somebody when they were growing up, uh, things that they've worked on in the past or people they've worked with. And, you know, I think that, you know, you know that's kind of what it seems like here with your journey is, is you know, finding the, these things that inspire you, finding ways that you can improve your, your talent and your process through, you know, working with all these really talented people in these other, you know, different industries and then rolling that all into, you know, your, your current project here with Huxley. Um, you know, as as far as, you know, the difference between, you know, kind of video game and movie stuff, you know, like I said, we've, you've worked on, on Halo, you've worked on Call of Duty, um, and then you've worked on the film side. Which one do you like better? Is it, is it like, oh, man, I love games, it's so, or I love film. Which one is it like, oh, I, I would, I would, if I could just do this one, I would work on one of these or, or the other. They're very different. I, I really enjoy both of them for different reasons. Like, growing up, I was such a game. I was a total gamer. Um and I like movies, but I was just like a real huge gamer. Like the original Halo was the reason I became an artist, to be honest. And that's awesome. it's like, oh man, I wonder if I could do this for a job. Like, this is so cool. Like, it'd be awesome to design architecture in these games or something. Like, how do I do that? How do I build levels? And that kind of led me down, like convincing my parents that this was a real career. And <laughs> there's, yeah. there's more jobs than being a doctor and a lawyer and stuff. And yeah. they should trust me. And um and but apparently they did good job they did yeah GG, I, I had to like, give a presentation I, I had to basically like my dad was like the investor in my future and i had to convince him that you know i, I think being an artist and here's the salaries you can full make, presentation huh path. wow that's 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 intense uh, but that's pretty awesome so he's pretty strict he's pretty strict yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i think a lot of that was uh sorry i think i forgot the original no, just like Question. the difference. Yeah, I mean, no, it's okay. Like the difference. All the difference between movie and like film. working on yeah. that versus film. Yeah. You know? yeah. I, and I think once when I was starting, games were much more crude. I, I mean, everything's like looks like a movie now in games. But yeah, at the time, games were trying to be like movies. Mm-hmm. And to me, I felt like the skill set that people in film had was much higher than games at the time. I think at the right now, it's the same or maybe even more so because yeah. games are so realistic now and you have to design everything. But at the time there was such a huge skill, like higher skill in film needed because we had to manufacture this stuff. You had to work with all these departments, to like build the weapon or build the sci-fi prop. And I just felt like I needed that experience. So for me, it was more just kind of chasing that knowledge. Like 
I can't go to school for this. I have to go to the source, which yeah. was me changing my whole life and moving to New Zealand. Um, and I got that experience and it was, it was awesome. And after that, I feel like games had started to catch up and it was, I kind of 100%. went back into games and it was just like, it felt like uh, the next phase of that, like helping that industry catch up to the fidelity of movies. And now, now it's kind of neck and neck or just, it's almost very similar now because you can make films in Unreal and yeah, it's, it's no, crazy. It, it, they're they're kind of merging, right? You look at this, and you know some of the most popular films and TV shows are from gaming franchises, right? And then you see the level yeah. of like work and, and detail, like you said, that are going into games and storytelling. Uh, you know, I feel like these these two you know industries are kind of merging in a certain way. Playing some games is essentially just like a, a gamified film. Right, like like you're yeah. watching a film yeah. and you get to play through it as it's going yeah. on. I mean, that's and that's a pretty like cool a lot of the Naughty Dog games are very you know it just feels like interactive movie in a really mm -hmm. cool way and um, but also in TV shows like Mandalorian pioneering like Unreal virtual production like Pedro Pascal's on set in the Mandalorian outfit, but the whole environment is all Unreal environment and yeah. it kind of moves around with him and. It's just, yeah, it's just, it's cool to see people experimenting and trying new things. And I mean, it'd be, it obviously looked really cool if they all flew to the desert to get those desert shots. But yeah. I understand if like everyone could just go to a back lot in LA and just shoot all over the galaxy in a, in a single sound stage or something. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Do, do, you, do you think that takes anything away uh, from film production and the feel of a film? Uh, that now we're, we're, we're going almost di uh, fully digital with all these things where it's like, oh, yeah, you could just fly to the desert and find a cool location and shoot this. No, 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 no. we could just do it on real now, and no one has to go anywhere. And is it cheaper? Pro probably, yeah. I mean, I, you know. I'm not sure. I mean, I've heard opposing views. I, I know some directors are just like, they see the soundstage stuff, and it's just like, nah, I'm just going to shoot it for real. Like, yeah. I'm not, I just want it to be real, you know? And I mean, then there's something to that. Like, you see the Dennis Villeneuve's, mm -hmm doing dune and stuff and to me that that feels so much more real than a lot of the stuff that was trying to be more hybrid production because you know they're in the desert like you can see it just the actors are dehydrated like it just affects it's, the actors right. right no no you're you're definitely right they're because they are there feel. like their their faces all like dried out and stuff where if they're on you, a sound stage so and just had a coffee yeah, yeah you they just had a massage oh the sand you know and you're just like and they all just right, had right. a back massage on the sound stage and like yeah i'm <laughs> yeah, in the desert now it's like yeah 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 no i i definitely feel that you know and, and i think that you know i i i think that we see that right you know i love you know kind of like 80s sci-fi movies too there's so much grit and and, and rawness to a lot of those uh, you know and Obviously, none of those things came true. We're like, we're sitting in the era where many of those were like saying, in the future, in 2020, right? Uh, but, but you know, you compare the original Dune to, to like the new ones kind of coming out and very different look and feel and, and things, you know. Uh, but, but, you know, I think we still have um, unique things that we can do with the kind of combination of both, right? I, I, and I, I agree with you. I think that, you know, seeing that uh, a film has done this in real time it does show, you know, it does show, but, but a lot of times maybe you can't, you know, like uh, in particular with sci-fi, it's hard to be able to create some of these worlds and these scenes and things that you want to showcase right from your imagination and, and you can't do it, you know, uh, on an actual set. So I think that, uh, you know, you're right. I think we're starting to see that kind of come into gaming as well and vice versa, kind of going back and forth, those, those skill sets being kind of interchangeable and the digital artists, you know, kind of having a huge uh, you know effect here on, on those on you know those directions yeah and i think it's all but also back to the, like the real versus digital extension sets and stuff like i also feel like it's also who's using it and how they're using it because i've seen stuff shot live that looks terrible you yeah. know and i've seen some virtual productions like some of the mandalorian episodes like some of the mandalorian episodes like i couldn't tell you couldn't like, tell that was man. so yeah. well done no yeah you definitely but then yeah. there's stuff you're just like maybe they should have done cg that's <laughs> Or That's like, uh, what was it? The new, like the new Avatar movie looked amazing. It looked mm -hmm. so good. And the only thing that took me out of it was the one kid that was live action because everything else looked so good. And, and like the light, they couldn't, I don't know. It's like the lighting wasn't as good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like, yeah. oh, maybe they should have just like 
the, yeah, CG the kids. <laughs> the, yeah, the, digital makes it almost too good. You know, sometimes where it's like, oh man, you know, the lighting here, that's actual, the actual lighting of what it was, but man, the digital lighting could actually be a little bit better. So that's a good point. It's a good point. But it's also crazy how mixed things are too. Like I saw a shot specific back to Avatar again, where it was like, I remember people in the trailer, it's like a hand grabbing something in the water around it. And everyone's like, oh my God, that's so realistic. Like how would they even do that? And mm -hmm. And when they broke down how they did that shot, there's actually an actor painted blue grabbing something, but then they replace everything behind. Like it was such a merging of everything. Yeah. It, it's kind of fascinating to see where, where one starts and the other ends now. Um, Hard to tell. <laughs> Hard to tell, man. You know, th things like, uh, you know, deep fakes are, are starting to become uh, easier and easier to do. Right. So you talk about all this stuff on a production level in film and movies and TV, but you know, access for individuals to a lot of things. Starting to get scary, man. Starting to get kind of scary. Yeah, it's fascinating. You know, AI is kind of creeping into everything too. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm always keeping my eye on what's happening in technology. How do you feel about AI? Seeing. Is it as an artist? You know, as an artist, it has been creating in this world for a long time. How do you feel about AI? Is it a tool, or is it a is it a you know does it detract from from what uh, humans do? Well, Huxley to me was always like. I guess to me, it's like separating like personal and professional. So like Huxley to me was my way to cope with the accelerating arms race in a production environment. Like I just want to draw and paint stuff and okay, everyone's using ZBrush now. If I don't use ZBrush, I'm out of my job. Yeah. You know, yeah. oh, everyone's photo bashing now. If I don't photo bash, my, paint, my paintings aren't realistic enough. Or it'll take me too long. I'm out of a job. Mm -hmm. So I have to adapt in that production environment to whatever everyone's starting to use. Oh, everyone's using Blender now. I need to use 3D and, and you know, you just have to keep up with the arms race or you're kind of obsolete. So that part of me sees AI as like, well, it's probably going to be a thing like all those other things. I was there at the start of photo bashing. Yeah. I think Elysium was one of the bigger first things where people were like, oh my God, I don't know, you could do that. How did you do that? <laughs> and I remember those first meetings where people submitted the work and I was like, can we do that? It, can we do that now? And the director is like, looks awesome. Yeah. It looks so real. It's like, okay, I guess that's what we're doing. If I don't do that, I'm not going to be able to keep up. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm out of a job. But for personal work, like Huxley, I wanted everything to be handcrafted. Like when I was younger in college, like I drew every form, every shape was directly from my pencil. Mm -hmm. um, like I designed every little shape. And then when I worked with a 3D artist for the trailers, I was in ZBrush, like helping because I, but it's like, because I also learned those skills, I can help translate these things now too. Right, which right. so so it's like nothing's wasted, right? Like yeah. I'm happy to keep up in that environment because I see it's useful tools for my stuff, which maybe is handcrafted and slower, but I can then bring it to such a higher fidelity and keep up with everything as it gets uh, adapted through all these other mediums. No, it makes total sense. You know, uh, so kind of in the middle, I guess. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I was, I was gonna say. So you kind of see in the middle. Both, I see both sides. I'm always in the middle of all this stuff. Like, yeah. I see the value there. I see why people hate it. it maybe it ends up somewhere in the middle. Uh, and, and, and you know, I'm kind of actually, to be honest, I'm right there with you. I think that it can be a valuable tool, but a really a tool. You know, you could put AI in the hands of a moron, and they're not going to come up with something like what you're going to come up with if you give them the same tool. Right. And so I think that or, you know, I'm more someone untalented. Right. But in general, I think that, it, you know, it, I, I sit kind of in the middle as well. You know, I think that there's still something there for, for, you know, things that are wholly crafted by humans. Right. The creativity there. Uh, but then also understanding yeah. that AI works as a tool in your in your toolbox. Right. And, and I, I, I guess back to photo bashing, because that was kind of what happened there, too. Obviously, this is a much more complicated version of that, where it's like I need a macho soldier guy with all this sci-fi stuff on him. So we just have to go to Google and find some cool soldier guy and like modify it and stuff. And like, I didn't take that photo, you know, some, someone in the army took that photo. And so like, there's always been an element of that. Like mm -hmm. what, what element of the source material and modification to turn it into something new is, I, I that was also kind of why I made Huxley is cause like, I don't, I feel like I'm less of an artist with all these advancements. And AI even more so, like pressing a button. I don't, you know, it's like the creation process is, is has become less and less each time of yeah. all these advances. Well, um, yeah, and, and I agree. I think you know less as far as you know time intensive. You know, and I think that we're in a weird we're in a weird time right now with AI, right? Because it's just kind of really emerging as this tool. 
and I think it's still kind of bulky to use, you know. And it, 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 it it's like it's like hey, all right, um, you know, you, you like to draw and paint, but you got to go use the tools they had in you know the 1400s. So, yeah. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? Like that. That's it, man. Like whatever they had. Like it's charcoal. You know, like you're not getting the you know refined tools that we have now that you've been used to. You got to go use those old ones. But once we get to a point where it's very refined, you're like, oh man, I could, I you know, I can finally tune and control this because it is a highly crafted instrument and not a crude one that is not been developed. I think I have a pretty funny anecdote about just this. Like when I first went to Weta, when when these things were starting to happen, like the ZBrush coming into play, and it was kind of like the traditional sculptors were, were kind of like, oh, what I have to keep up with that, or you know, my sculpting is too slow, even though to I think everyone agreed it it was much more refined. They had all these years of experience, but they didn't have the technical skill a lot of the time to translate that. But they were saying they were explaining how far back it went to like, yeah, on the first Lord of the Rings, everyone was just drawing with pencil like Alan Lee. And then one day someone brought in colored pencil. And then the director goes <laughs> immediately to the colored pencil and ignores all the pencil drawings. And then the next week, someone brings a marker and he ignores the colored pencil drawing, goes to the marker. And then the next week it's Photoshop or whatever. It's like this arms yeah. race of just like, what's the new thing? And a lot of the directors and stuff just want whatever the new thing is that gets them as close as possible to what's going to be in the movie. Um, and, and again, it's, I feel like there's always going to be something, something like that. I mean, I'm sure there'll be something after AI and it, it's the next thing and, yeah. and it's just kind of keeping up with it. And, um, but I will say though, like with all those advancement advancements, it's like, it does save time and the end goal like as an artist, I want to feel like I created something and have that sort of like, wow, I did something really cool. Yeah, sense of I feel like I accomplished something. But on the other hand, in a production environment, it's like the reason we're here is to make a great movie. Does this help me get to that result faster? Mm -hmm. And would it be better if I did it by hand and mm -hmm. spent like, like if I can get there in one day, and it looks exactly or is very, very close to what I would have done if I spent a week painting that by hand. Mm -hmm. And then I just have to like paint over it a little bit to, to get basically what I would have done. Yeah. Is it better ha had I done it by scratch and wasted a week of production time doing that? Or is it better if I use these new tools and do that modification that looks like what I would have done anyway? It's like kind of the moral dilemma. I think a lot of artists are. Hundred percent, and that's Turning a over. great way. It's a great way to kind of like lay it out because I think that's spot on right there. I think it's spot on. Um, all right, wait, just kind of shifting here to to the future. We've talked a lot about what you've done and 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 how Huxley got started and your 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 history here. Uh, you know, win, win next movie trailer. Win, win next protest <laughs> for the game. Uh, movie release the... date. W uh, like, what, what, do we get? Do we get another game? Like, like, don't leave us hanging. What, what about the NFTs? Sure. Like, tell us all. Tell us about some of that stuff. Sure. I mean, most of the first half of this year is book production, getting all the books manufactured. We're, we're nearly there. Like my room is just full of all the proofs and manufacturing. Um, and then after that is a collector's edition. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of it is the digital is so quick and now the production just ma manufacturing, everything just takes a long time. So yeah. for me, I want to make sure everyone gets all their books and it's, it's really close. Um, get all those out in the world. After that, also is the kind of the public release version because the whole world needs to be able to enjoy this. And this is kind of the first mock up of public release version about yeah. about as thick as Watchmen, which is going to be awesome. Yeah. Um, and then the next book, Oracle, which is a prequel, is done. The first part of it, uh, the trailer for that, done by Union Image, is all done as well. They did uh, the Star Wars Eclipse trailers, they did Elden Rings trailers, they nice. did. Love Death and Robots episodes and stuff. So like, I can't wait for that to be out. Wait, um, when is that? Is that like, we're talking about a month, um, six months? A lot of it is, I'm not sure if I can say. Well, like I, a lot of it wants to be time when we go to be pitching this, right? Like yeah. having that release when we're in the middle of stuff would be pretty huge, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of that is more trying to time it. What will create the biggest impact and what will help the most while we're sure. doing the show stuff. Um, and so that's that's a lot of the the planning right now and um, getting those bigger things uh, out the door and a lot of it's kind of slow and boring at least you know just manufacturing books shipping them driving to Portland to sign books uh, make sure everyone gets them everyone's happy um, yeah 
So, so then what's the next step here with, you know, with your empire, right? Because that's what we're, we're building an empire here, right? That, that's, that's the idea. Uh, um, a franchise right. IP empire with Huxley. You know, we got, we got, we're getting the books out, you know, the high quality stuff that you're producing right now. And then, you know, is, is, like, is like getting the movie ready and, and an, an, another trailer, is that the priority after that? Or is it like, oh, we're going to work on the, the game or are they kind of concurrently being built? Like, where, where well, the game, on? right. The, well, like I said earlier, like the the demo was like a vertical slice demo, yeah. which to me is like a self. That, like that's the trailer. Like I'm not the trailer is released. I'm not actively making a movie. That's I, I need to go pitch it and find the right mm -hmm. partners and stuff. So for me, this is like the proof of concept for going into those meetings. Hey, this is how it can translate. A lot of these assets are ready to go, um, and it's just finding the right partner. And kind of like you talked about in some of your other podcasts, like. The goal with all this stuff is like, I just want to make an amazing game. I just want to make an amazing show or whatever it ends up being and doing something too quickly or short term and would be pretty damaging if you just yeah. rush something out the door or, you know, whatever other things might be. Um, but the core of the IP to me is kind of a trilogy of stories that can be adapted into to any medium. Um, so the second book in that trilogy is pretty close to done. The first part of the book, Oracle, is done. Part two is like the second half of the, the main story, and that's almost done. And then after that will be the third trilogy or third prequel story. And that will be kind of like the first trilogy of books, stories in this universe. And to me, that that is kind of like a huge foundation of, of all this, which going forward, I think, is really needed because I've been on productions and other things where they're kind of laying down the railroad track as the train's coming and it's it doesn't work out so well, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I totally agree. I think, you know, having a good solid story and tons and tons of, of you know, backstory for, for your characters and, and like you said, talking about prequel stuff, I think that is, that is huge to create a world that is diverse, dynamic, and uh, can, can, you know, be the, be the, the backdrop for a movie series, right? And for a video game yeah. and doing things beyond that, right? If it's thin, man, you just end up with Game of Thrones and then you have a shitty last season and you're just like, man, you guys, you guys just killed it, you know? Or, you know, stuff like that too. Or even even recent stuff that's come out where you can tell they didn't, they kind of made it up as they went along or it just yeah. kind of, you tell it wasn't adapting anything and you're like, they spent how much? They spent 400 million on that, really? <laughs> right, yeah. Like, exactly. and then it just flops and you're like, man, you know, mm -hmm. so to me, it's just like that's kind of been the whole thing. Is just I've I've seen all these other movies get made. I've been on all these other movies get made. I've seen the pros and cons of the pitfalls, I guess. And for me, having that original graphic novel done, having it adapted into a trailer, to me was huge because I I, I know how those people think. It's just like yeah, yeah cool art kid, but what it would look like as a movie is like here. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's just anticipating like. Eliminating the nose in the room, and the same thing for like the the vertical slice demo. It's like, yeah, yeah, but what would it look like as a game? Like, it looks like that, you know? Yeah. Look, no, look they, how cool this is. They they both got me hyped, man, and that's why I keep asking. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, do we have a date? Like, like, can we get some people on the phone here, guys? We need to talk. Who do we need to talk to to get you in the front of the right people so we can get these things going? Like, that's what it comes down to because I think sure. that there there is a lot there, and I think it's cool, and I I, I want to get my hands on. On that uh, on that copy there for for the you know the Huxley saga the whole thing man I think it would be great for and, sure you know, yeah a lot of it is just like is yeah a lot of it has been like most of last year and the beginning of this year it's just been like kind of production hell just like manufacturing a physical thing and yeah it's hard I we I don't know foolishly made thirty six different versions of things that I had to I had to prove thirty six different products at once and uh, <laughs> so that was. Probably never gonna happen again, but I did it, and it's all it's, it's very close to finally going to production. Uh, collectors editions will be easier. It's 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 like just five different variants instead of thirty six. Uh, <laughs> um, but it, it's cool. It, I'm no one else would have done that, and we did it, and it's it's gonna be cool. It'll be a moment that all these different things are out there, um, and but on the game side and stuff, like just going back to like. So much of it is around game design and having a good game designer. And I'm kind of in the middle of some things, but I can't really discuss some of that. But like, I'm hoping I found 
someone that I think if, if I can get him to do some stuff, I think it would be pretty amazing. And but it's just a it's a it's more it's a longer term thing. Ben, I mean, I I told you at the beginning here that you needed to give me all the intel. You're holding back, and if I gotta pull if I gotta pull some fingernails out, man, it's not gonna be pretty. Can, can, I think I, it's like just a hint. Can you give a hint? I don't want to have to no. do it. I don't want. All right, he's like, no, I can't. Uh, I think a lot of it though too is just like since the start, uh, it's just me like creating the most appealing like like meal for these bigger studios or whoever ends up being the the yeah. entity that will help bring this to the next kind of level. Is, You're pitching for dad. You're pitching. It's just for like, yeah. Dad. I mean, it's, 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 like, it's hey never guys, the same thing. This, this the bigger, works. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pitching. To, I'm pitching, Dad. Here it is. This and 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 you know. Oh, here's what it looks like as a movie. Here's what it looks like as a game. Yeah, you know. Let Let's do this, and, and we need that. Yeah, and also the because I've worked in production, like on the new trailer, um, what I started doing for the next book, it's a it's a bit more production art look focus, like a story, visual storybook instead of like graphic novel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and because of that, every painting is a 3D scene. So essentially the production design is done. So for the new trailer, we were able to just give the production company the scenes with the mock out geo. And it's just like, that saves so much time. That saves so much cost. And they were just like, wow, this is like, we just have to make what you gave us pretty <laughs> instead yeah, yeah. of, instead of what does this trailer look like? What are the shots? What happens? What's the, like, it's all done. Just make it look very pretty. And the whole Oracle book, especially, basically the whole production design for a whole movie or a show or whatever it ends up being is all done. Like if you ask a studio how many millions they spend just on that and going into those meetings and just being like, this is ready to go, you know, just here it is on a silver platter, ready to go. Who, you know, who wants so, it? So, all right. So Oracle uh, prequel coming this year and a mm -hmm. trailer is, is coming soon. Well, ideally the book and trailer at the same time. Same time. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So people can, read the story uh the trailer is like a small part of that book story and so the story will, the book will be like oh what happens you know, what happens yeah, next yeah, 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 yeah. um okay. so it'll be cool uh to see people reaction on that it's much more of a kind of gritty war story um so i'm excited to tell all these different stories and experiences uh, as things get fleshed out awesome well, hey, Ben, thanks so much for joining us here today. I know you didn't have much of a choice. We got you. We nabbed you out here. You know, I, we got most of the intel from you, but I didn't, I didn't want to have to take your finger here, so I, I appreciate that uh, you, you, uh, you, you kind of explored the, this world with us a little bit and let us, knew, uh, let us know what was kind of coming up here with Huxley and what you're doing. Um, you know, let, can you let people, like, just know exactly where they can find you and, and uh, you know, before we go? Sure. I think uh, mainly HuxleySaga.com, uh, Huxley Twitter. Uh, you can find me at Ben Morrow Art on Twitter as well. Uh, but I think a lot of it just in the Discord. I'm, I'm there every day. Uh, I think it's discord.gg slash Huxley. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I think that would be the best, best way to keep in touch and follow along and see things as they get out the door. Awesome. Well, thanks again so much for joining us, Ben. That's all we have for today, agents. Until next time, Secret Agent Stash, over and out. Secret Agent Stash Secret Agent Stash Oh!